One of the biggest questions I keep getting on this channel and over on my Instagram page is what monitor am I using for this setup and how do I have three different things going into it all at the same time? And I also wanted to address why this monitor has kept me from going for the Apple Studio display, even though I did pick up the Mac Studio itself. So subscribe if you like aesthetic tech content and let's just get right into it. Let's talk about the monitor itself for a moment. This is the Dell U2720Q, which is a 4K 27 inch monitor, which is running at 60 Hertz. The design of the monitor is really understated. It does come on its own stand, but it has a vase mount, which is what I always prefer. And I've got it rigged up on this really cheap one from Von House. I think it was about 20 pounds and it just holds the monitor up a bit nicer and makes it look like it's kind of got that floating effect, which I think generally speaking looks a bit nicer than it being on a stand. One of the main things that drew me to this monitor though is the input variety, which is really, really strong considering the price point of this monitor. You've got USB-C in, you've got HDMI, you've got DisplayPort, and there's two USB-A's on the back. And on the side, there's also a USB-C and another USB-A slot, which just makes it really, really versatile. It's also got USB-C power pass-through, so if you connect your MacBook to it, for instance, it can output the display to the monitor while charging your MacBook, all with one cable, which is really, really awesome. That was one of the main reasons I picked this up when I did. I really like this monitor. It's not perfect. The color accuracy is pretty good, but it's not amazing. It's bright enough for indoor use, but it's not hyper bright. It does say it has HDR support, but honestly, I, I don't think you should buy this monitor if you are looking for HDR workflows. It, it's not for that. It's just a decent 4K panel with pretty decent colors too, but I still generally check everything either on my iPhone or my MacBook Pro because they tend to just have better colors, which more people see. To add to the customization a little bit, I stuck an RGB light strip to the back of this, which was another really cheap upgrade. And that just plugs into one of the spare USB-A ports on the back, which powers it. If you work a lot in the night, which I often do, this just adds a nice glow around the monitor and is less stressful on your eyes, I find. And most of them come with remotes, so you can change the color too, which is really nice. I haven't done an amazing job of sticking it to the back, but luckily it doesn't need to look nice. It just needs to work. And I really recommend doing it. It's a really cheap way of upgrading your entire desk and it doesn't cost much either. I've got an iPad stand and this really nice Grove made desk shelf as well, which add to the overall setup, but I've just explained those in a recent desk setup video. So I'll link that up here and put it in the description below if you want to check that out too. So with all those ports on the back, I can actually have loads of things plugged into it at the same time. So let me run you through those. First up is my custom built gaming PC, which was my entire YouTube studio at one point. I've had this PC in one form or another for about five years now, and pretty much every single video up until very recently has been made on there. And that's going in through DisplayPort, which is one of the ports on the back. At one point, I thought the PC was going to be kind of my future, but then things like graphics cards and PC components just got really expensive, as I'm sure you know, over the pandemic and things like that. So I'm actually making this really slow transition to Mac. But I decided to keep the PC around because rather than sell it for parts, I think it's probably going to be more useful for me to have it kicking around here in my office. And eventually when graphics cards prices go back to normal, which they are getting there, I can uh, finally put one in and start using it again for a lot more gaming. But for what I do do on it, which is a little bit of Overwatch and Diablo, it's kind of absolutely fine for that. It's a GTX 1070 Ti in there. It's a Ryzen 5 800X and it's got 32 gigabytes of RAM and it's all SSD storage. So there's plenty going on in there and it's plenty powerful enough, even if I need to jump back to it for video editing. But for now, I am actively moving away from it, which actually brings me around to the second thing that's plugged in, which is my relatively new Mac Studio. The Mac Studio is the latest addition to my desk setup and it's plugged into the monitor via USB-C. The reason I picked up the Mac Studio is because I'm moving over to Apple and to their complete ecosystem slowly but surely. And the Mac Studio was kind of everything I wanted from Apple in a desktop setup. I sit at this desk 90% of the time and I already have an older MacBook. So I didn't feel the need to go to the newer M1 MacBook Pros and things like that. And the Mac Studio just had pretty much everything I wanted from a laptop version for a little bit cheaper. And it's also one I can just slot directly into this setup and carry on using everything as I do. The Mac Studio is the hub for everything I kind of do creatively. So I video edit on here on Final Cut, which I've just moved over to from Premiere Pro. I do all of my photo editing on here. I do all of my research on here and general internet use and 
absolutely everything you can imagine pretty much on the Mac Studio. And I've got it paired up with my iPad Pro, which is sitting on this stand next to the monitor. I really, really like this and I use it via universal control, which just lets you bring your mouse and keyboard directly over to it just by moving your mouse over to that screen. And you can just use it like you normally would, which is really awesome. I love using it for like webcam and checking iPad apps and just having a bit more space to work out from. It's really, really interesting. And it's a really cool use of the ecosystem. So the Mac Studio is the second setup I have going into this monitor, which is via USB-C, which brings us round to the last and final one, which is my Nintendo Switch setup. And I'm really, really happy with this setup and I've absolutely been loving having the Nintendo Switch built into my desk. The Nintendo Switch is rigged up through classic HDMI. All it is is a really long cable, which is going down the trunking on the side of my desk and it's going into the back of my monitor, just like normal. There's nothing really super secret about this setup. It's just a really long HDMI cable. But what I do have is this new dock from Gully Kit, which is how I think you say it. This is like a really minimal stand for the iPad, which also doubles as a dock. I know a while ago that like third party docks for Nintendo Switches seem to be really risky, but this one's been absolutely fine and I've had no issues so far. I'm not gonna say go out and buy one because who knows what the situation is like, but I haven't seen any bad reviews of this one. And I absolutely love it because it shows the Switch off. I find Nintendo's one just really kind of covers the screen and just makes it look kind of blank, whereas this one just lets the Switch be the Switch. And it's really simple and minimal. And it's just an overall nice thing to have sitting on your shelf. I find the Nintendo Switch is really great because it's designed to have really short bursts of gameplay because of its kind of portable nature. So if I am waiting for a video to export or if I've got like 10 minutes before a call or something, I can quickly jump onto Breath of the Wild or Animal Crossing and just play a little bit of that while I'm waiting. And if I can't be bothered to have it running through the monitor, I can just take it off and just play it like normal. So those are the three different things I have going into this Dell monitor. And the only bad thing really which comes up is there's no intelligent way of switching between them. Generally speaking, I will have to do it on the manual buttons on the monitor. However, if you turn one thing off and you turn another thing on, it can detect what is on and will switch to that automatically, which is quite good. But other than that, I'm doing it manually. And it's a similar thing for the keyboard and mouse too. Luckily, my keyboard and mouse both have different Bluetooth profiles. So I can literally switch to different modes really quickly. It's just a couple taps on each of them and then it connects up to the other computer I'm using. Luckily, the audio setup is really, really simple and it works really well. Everything is routed to the monitor. That monitor has a headphone out which is going to the speakers on either side of the desk. So it doesn't matter which device I switch to, audio just comes out of it normally. It's really ideal. Overall, this Dell U2720Q has got all the inputs I need and the price isn't too bad either, which kind of brings us around to why I didn't bother picking up the Mac Studio display. One, because it's pretty much under half the price and two, you're getting all of that input array and everything else and the VESA mount support and things like that kind of built in. And I always thought if I was going to upgrade from this monitor, I wanted to go, you know, 4K 120 Hertz or to have some sort of really hefty upgrade that makes it feel worth it. And while I do think the Mac Studio display is gorgeous, I've seen one in an Apple store and I think, you know, if you've got the money, you just wanna go all in, it's the way to go. And it does have better colors and it's way brighter. And, you know, it's just got a vast array of really cool things like a webcam built in, a, you know, decent speakers and things like that. But for me, it just didn't seem worth hefting out the amount of extra money just to kind of get a couple extra bits. This Dell has been pretty decent for me and pretty decent for what I do here on YouTube, which is my main thing, is good enough for me. And I don't see me investing the money is going to kind of pay off in any meaningful way. You know, I could be totally wrong. It could be completely worth it, but for now, this is what I'm gonna be using going forward. And that's kind of why I haven't bothered picking up the Mac Studio display. Although I must admit, I would really like one. All in all, that sums up my complete monitor situation. I hope that kind of answers a lot of questions that I've been having about this monitor and how I have each of my devices plugged into it. If you've got any further questions, ask below and I'll try my best to get back to you. And also, if you have a completely different monitor situation, then let me know what you're using. Is it an ultra wide? Is it a dual setup or a triple or something even more crazy than that? I always like to hear how you're using it and share with us all how you're being productive and that sort of thing. As mentioned, if you want to check out the entire office tour or the desk setup on its own, I'll link those below so you can see them. And as always, I'll see you all in the next one.